Hi, I'm Kelly Sanabria, founder and CEO of Femworking. Today, we're going to talk about the old BJ. Bridge job, of course. So lots of entrepreneurs have bridge jobs. Maybe you've had one, maybe you're thinking about getting one, maybe it terrifies you. Today, I'm going to share with you why you might need a bridge job and four tips for successfully managing a bridge job while still growing your own company. First, let's talk about the why. I recently saw Elizabeth Gilbert on Marie TV. She's the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and more recently, Big Magic. She told a story about how somebody was mad at inspiration. Somebody had written into her and said that they were mad at inspiration. They were mad at inspiration because in building their business and being so inspired to build um, a company and to you know move forward with a venture, that they had um, gotten themselves in a really bad financial situation. When the dream didn't work out, they were kind of screwed. The truth is, being an entrepreneur means being financially responsible and being responsible across the board. It's really important to be responsible as you build a business. It can be so easy to bury your head in the sand and ignore financial reality, but take responsibility for your finances. And hey, if you need to take a bridge job, take a bridge job. Or as some people like to say, get a BJ. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, but sometimes businesses fail. Your business might not work out. And if that happens, you don't want to be mad at inspiration later. You want to leave yourself in a financially okay position so that if you fail, you're still on your feet and it's okay. Let's talk about BJ shame. So there should not be any shame around having a bridge job. Marie Forleo says it best herself, and we all know Marie is always right. She says bridge jobs are empowering, not embarrassing. And from working with entrepreneurs, I've noticed that there's a divide in the entrepreneurial world. In femme working, when people decide to get a bridge job, they do it very quietly. No one ever shouts from the rooftops, hey, guess what? I'm so grateful I got this amazing, amazing bridge job that's going to use all of my skills and make me feel really fulfilled and check all the boxes of my life and put food on the table for my families. No one ever says that. Um, and when people do tell me about it, I always hear that somebody got a bridge job or went back to work. I always hear it secondhand from somebody else. And there's always this sense of, oh, poor thing. She had to get a bridge job. But while getting a bridge job might bruise your ego and some people might think, oh, that, you know, they're better than you because they don't have a bridge job and they're working their business full time. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Check your ego at the door. It, don't let it influence your decisions. What matters at the end of the day is where the numbers fall and what those numbers mean to you. If it's putting food on the table to funding your dream business, bridge jobs are empowering. And just because someone has a bridge job does not mean that they're any less dedicated of an entrepreneur. So show them some respect and some love. Marie, who had bridge jobs for years while she built her business, which we all know is very successful, says a steady income is speed stick for your soul. It keeps you from reeking of desperation. And that's true. It really is empowering and keeps you on your feet, stable and calm, knowing that you're not um, burying your head in the sand and ignoring financial reality in, life, in your life. So if you can find a bridge job, you get bonus points if it actually aligns with your dream job and helps you to build your own business. That's something you definitely want to look for when you're building a dream job. Let's talk about four tips you can use to successfully manage a bridge job while still growing your own company. Tip number one, set a schedule for both. So I have my own schedule when I have a bridge job um, and I would plot out my work week. Basically, I would use just a Google one week calendar. It helped me to see the ratio of hours that I was getting in for each of my jobs, both my contract job, my bridge job, and my company and how many hours I was putting into my company. It forces you to face reality and can help you manage your dream job expectations. You may not be able to grow as quickly as you wanted, but that's okay. Number two, set business goals for yourself. This will keep you accountable for your dream job and help you feel like you are making progress. It will help you focus also. Number three, get whatever you can from that bridge job. Maybe you get training. Maybe it inspires you to do your own thing. I know sometimes with a bridge job, you can get kind of annoyed at the aspects of working with um, someone else or having to work for a manager or something like that. Use that as fuel for your fire to keep growing your own company. For me, my bridge job is satisfying for me on a lot of levels, so I use it as a way to um, fulfill me. I get to use my degrees. I get to use my experience. I get to use my Spanish skills. I get to be creative. I get to practice my professionalism around other people and not just working at home. 
I get to really use all the skills that I developed in my life along the way. So um, I, I use my bridge shop to grow those and enhance those and also um, try to bring those into femme working, what I'm doing here as well. Number four, focus and isolate. The one benefit of having fewer hours in your day is that you will use your hours better. So when you sit down to work and you know you only have a limited amount of hours to focus on your business, you'll be more focused and you'll be able to say, okay, this is what I need to get done today. And you just dig right in. Sometimes when you have too many hours to work on your business, you can actually flounder around. You get caught going down the, the rabbit hole that is, you know, Facebook or Twitter, um, and you're not as focused. So there is a, a, an upside to having a limited amount of hours and working in your business. And that is that you can focus. Those are our four tips for how to manage a bridge job while still growing your own company. Have you ever had a bridge job? Did you ever have one while you were growing your company? Do you have any tips that might be able to help the rest of us manage a bridge job while still growing our passion businesses? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and you can always email me, kelly at femworking.com, and be sure to get on our mailing list too. Head over to femworking.com and sign up.